This video is sponsored by World of Tanks, but more on that later. Last time in this project series we made a robot arm for the really useful robot and thanks again to Robotis for the Dynamixel servos that went into it, check out part 4 of the series for more information on that. And the plan is that the robot arm folds and unfolds around the robot's body just under its head, so we can get it out and it's got quite a wide range of motion for manipulating objects, or we can fold it away again for driving so it doesn't stick out. I also calculated the inverse kinematic model for the arm, and that detail is also in part 4 of the series, and it's very similar to another robot arm I built the week before that you can check out in my channel. And this allows us, as well as folding the arm out and folding it away again, to control the arm and move that end effector, or at least the wrist joint, in perfectly straight lines, backwards and forwards, and left and right. And that means we can move the arm in a known coordinate system that makes it very easy to position in 3D space. I also added a placeholder for the wrist, which using Ford kinematics, working out all the other joint positions, can stay perfectly parallel with the robot's body, and that's going to be where the gripper is mounted to manipulate objects. The robot runs ROS, and it's running that on a Jetson Xavier NX from NVIDIA, and it's using a LiDAR and the ROS navigation stack to navigate from A to B. You can see me putting the arrow down in the bottom right hand corner, and it planning a path around obstacles, having mapped the room, and finding its way along the route. Now I do want to integrate the robot arm with ROS as well, and I'm aware of something called MoveIt, which is an API for coding robot arms essentially, with lots and lots of features. This looks quite in depth though, and I did spend quite a long time learning about building a robot to use the navigation stack, and this possibly looks like more information. So having spent some time building development robots that drove around and around in circles, and I really only sorted the navigation stack out when I got to this robot that we're building now, I think for now I'm going to do a much easier implementation of integrating the arm with ROS, rather than using all of MoveIt, which will probably take me several weeks or months to learn. In the last video I coded everything for the kinematic model into a microcontroller which is a Teensy 4.1 and we used the Dynamixel MKR format shield to interface to the serial bus on all the Dynamixel servos as well as some analogue pots to give it the values to actually go to in X and Y. Now the robot already has a Teensy 4.1 in its base and all that does at the moment is interface to the O drive over some serial lines which control the wheels. So I think the plan is going to be getting that Teensy and relocating it to the top of the robot. At the moment it's just plugged into a USB hub on the end of a long USB cable along with the LiDAR interface. At the back of the robot we've got the Nvidia Jetson Xavier NX which runs Linux and runs ROS, so it makes sense to go and put the microcontroller right next to it and just plug it in with USB there and just run long serial wires to the base. So I need to make a proper mounting for that though, so first of all we're going to 3D print some parts and make a nice enclosure where we can hold a control panel, a place for the Teensy and a place for the MKR interface. Thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project and lots of other projects, so check out my channel for more 3D printed projects and check out 3dfuel.com. So the back panel just fits right on there and screws onto the existing screw holes that I made in the back of the robot chassis. And a Xavier NX is actually attached with sticky pads for now, but I've got the same holder that I did have in the base and I did have mounted on the back and that allows the Xavier NX just to drop in, and allows its USB ports to be exposed at the top, which is very useful in a development robot. And there's a back panel which has a control panel on it with an emergency stop switch on, as well as two activation switches, and one of those is to activate the O-Drive calibration for the wheels, and the other will be to home the linear axis of the head and body of the robot that move up that piece of V-slot extrusion. And for now I've left a big hole in so that the Xavier can vent its air and I can keep an eye on it. So I think that looks okay altogether, it follows the contours of the back of the head and just gives us a boxy enclosure to put all of those electronics in. I've just temporarily mounted the Teensy in there with a bit of blue tape but there's plenty of space for that, 
and I've also extended those serial wires all the way to the bottom. For now I'm using unshielded cable, but it probably works fine and I've not had any problems in the past. And those cables of course go down the cable track that neatly folds away as the head goes up and down. So we'll just give that a test drive and I'm using the ROS remote to drive in manual mode. Now the carpet is a bit spongy here, I normally test this on a firm floor, but I just want to check functionality that my wheels still work and there's no problem with those unshielded serial cables with the brushless motors. The arm currently isn't powered up so that's just free to move around, so that's the next thing that we need to get sorted. Before I power up the Dynamixels, I'm going to sort out that linear axis, which is a DC motor of an encoder. So I fitted a BTS7960 motor driver in the base, which is going to control it. Now that's powered from the 24 volt battery, which also powers the wheels. So I'm using the same e-stop to go and disable that motor driver by taking away the 5 volt signal from the enable pins. I do need to make a cover for the motor, but for now the motor wires run down and the encoder wires run up to the Teensy at the top. As well as the encoder wires running up to the Teensy, I've also run the PWM wires down from the Teensy to the BTS7960 in the base so we can control the speed of the motor. I'm using some code from the Arduino Playground website to read that encoder and then we can position it. I'm using an additional USB serial interface for debug on serial 6 of the Teensy and that's because serial 0 is in use by the ROS serial library that's communicating with ROS and all of the code on the Arduino. We need some sort of limit switch at one end of the axis so that we can home the axis and zero the encoder count and make sure it doesn't overrun its end stops. So I'm using an optical proximity sensor that I found on eBay which just gives us a digital signal and has its own adjuster. So now we can write some code which homes the axis till it gets to the top and zeroes the encoder count so it knows where it is. Now it's time for a quick ad from the video's sponsor which is World of Tanks. World of Tanks is free to play and there are over 100 million players worldwide. For PC it has more than 550 tanks, destroyers, artillery, light and medium and heavy tanks so there's always a new way to play. There's lots of terrain to explore, you can roll out across open fields, climb steep hills, sneak through forests, tear across deserts and pick your battles in urban and industrial zones in over 40 battle arenas. The game is inspired by historical accuracy which means there are authentic models and vehicles. During the game you can earn experience and modify or upgrade your tank. So download World of Tanks now using the link in the description box. During the registration, use the code TANKMANIA to get 7 days premium account access for free and also 250,000 credits, the premium tank Excelsior and 3 rental tanks for 10 battles each, the Tiger 131, the Cromwell B and the T-34-85M. To start with, I want to be able to control the robot manually and I can already do that with my ROS remote that I built in a previous video which is a Raspberry Pi and an Arduino running the ROS serial library reading the switches and joysticks and sending those as ROS messages. Now I'm already sending the command velocity topic with its message to actually drive the robot but we only need to go forwards and backwards and steer so we're only using two of the possible six axes we can send from the two three axis joysticks on the remote. So I've decided just to strip out those extra bits of spare data and use those to control the linear axis and the robot arm for now so we can test it and drive manually. So I've got a variable which accumulates a value, taking the value from the stick and adding it to itself on each cycle and then going and positioning the linear axis using the encoder which means that I can turn the knob a little bit and go up and down and jog it up and down as much as I want until it hits its end stop. So now it's time to power up those Dynamixels. I've got the Dynamixel MKR shield here which is mounted on another 3D print and that fits neatly above the Teensy so that I can just cable that in with some jumper wires. And thanks to Cool Components for sponsoring lots of the electronic components in this project including the Perma Proto board which is a solder version of breadboard so you can move your breadboard layouts over really easily. I use right angle pin strip to attach the wires to that shield so they come off really easily and I can remove it to get to the Teensy. I've also run in a 12 volt wire from the 12 volt battery in the base of the robot as well as the Dynamixel serial interface that goes off to the servos. And that 12 volt supply goes via a big emergency stop switch that cuts the power off so we can use that just to kill the arm if it gets into difficulties. If you watch my ROS remote build you'll know I implemented some buttons and also a touch screen which publish ROS topics. 
so I'm subscribing to that topic on the Teensy using the Arduino code on the ROS serial library and using that just to fold and unfold the arm. When it unfolds it goes to the kinematic position set by the sticks. And those sticks are analog and also contribute to an accumulator variable the same as the linear axis so that means I can jog the arm around by moving them and the further I push them the faster it goes because it adds more to the value on that cycle. That means I can make very fine movements and move the arm very slowly if I want to. And we get quite a wide range of motion there and of course those sticks mix together so that we can move around in a circle as best I can do manually and that seems like a pretty good test for the range of motion and the robot's joint capabilities. As well as controlling the arm with ROS messages, I'm also publishing a transform on the TF topic. Now the robot already publishes a transform from ODOM, which is a stationary reference in its environment as it drives around, to the base link of the robot, which is its mobile base, and from base link to laser. So now I'm publishing an additional transform from the base link to what I've called the node arm. This is actually the wrist of the robot arm, and we can see that moving around as I move the robot. This code is running on the Teensy, so it's just another transform in the Arduino code using the ROS serial library to publish it. This works for all three axes, including the linear axis, and of course they all work together. Now I'm actually calculating and publishing the actual position based on the linear motor encoder for that Z axis moving up and down. However, for the rest of the arm, those dynamics or servos, I'm actually publishing the demand position and just making sure the motors are fast enough that they go at the speed I request the position. What I should be doing is looking at all the encoders in the arm of where the arm actually is and then calculating forward kinematics to get to the end effector and publishing that position and that means I could also power all the servos down, move the servos manually by moving that arm for training for instance and my transform would still update even though I'm not actually moving them with the demand position. But for now it's the other way around because that was just easier rather than calculating all the kinematics again so that's something we could improve on. The robot is of course getting quite top heavy and there have been quite a few questions and comments about how stable it is so it's time for driving on a smooth floor which is of course the best surface because it's nice and firm and that seems to be driving pretty well. It will go a lot slower in autonomous mode but for manual mode I can really test it. It probably is possible to tip it over if I really did something stupid with the wheels but it's not really going to do that driving autonomously anyway. Let's fold the arm out and give it a go. Ideally we won't have it folded out all the time so we don't fall over or crash into it and strip all the gears in the servos, but that seems perfectly stable as well. And the plan for this arm is that it can reach multiple surfaces and even potentially the floor, so let's see how that works out. It looks like we've got quite a good range of motion to reach over a surface. Uh, most actual tables, for instance the ones I use upstairs, are quite a lot lower. So that will probably be part of the test. But of course we can go down to meet the surface there and jog it down. And we can extend with quite a big reach to try and pick up objects. And that gives us quite a wide range of motion. For my research I'm really only going to be picking up quite light objects, we're not going to pick up children or pets or anything like that, but the arm is pretty strong and the robot's pretty stable. I think the arm would break before it tips over in fact, and that seems quite practical to carry objects like cups and things that we can recognise with machine vision. So we can move that all around, there's not really any detriment to the arm there, it's not bending under the load or anything like that, as long as we remember to take the cup off before we fold it up again. But of course eventually we'll have a gripper fitted to actually manipulate that object and fold it away and be able to carry it as we're driving. I've tried to keep the explanation quite snappy in this video so we don't cover too much old ground. Check out of course the build series for this whole robot that's got a lot more information in. If you want to know more about the ROS remote there's a whole video on that. And there's also a whole ROS and AI playlist in my channel featuring other robots including the orange robot behind me and the current navigation module it has on it which is an Intel RealSense tracking camera that's used to substitute for the wheel odometry as well as a LiDAR. There's also robot dogs drawing maps and lots of other things in my channel with all of that explanation. 
action. So the next plan for this robot is to actually make a gripper that can manipulate objects. We've got an Intel RealSense depth camera in here that can recognize the distance to objects. So the plan is to use that to actually drive the kinematics for the arm so that we can grasp objects and manipulate them, as well as using the navigation stack to actually drive the robot so we can make it do useful tasks autonomously. So there's quite a lot more fun coming up in the series. I have published all the CAD and code for this to date now. All of that's on GitHub and the link's in the description to this video. All of it's open source if you want to check through that or build your own. So if you want to support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership, those links are in the description to this video as well. And patrons and YouTube channel members can get access to all the videos up to a week early, as well as sneak peeks and pictures of what's coming up and be involved in all of that discussion. All right, that's all for now.